Here comes Jeff Gordon. Gordon inside of Elliott. Look at him working that wheel. Sawing at it. Yeah, it's still slick out there. They're still doing some sliding as they try to accelerate off these tight turns. Gordon, of course, the leader in rookie points. Here he is. Looks like Bill left the door open there for him, but Jeff just cannot take away this spot because Elliott has good straightaway speed. Coach Ray Everham, the crew chief on the DuPont Chevrolet this morning, and he said they still don't quite have the handle on these short racetracks for Jeff Gordon. Still don't have the feel that Jeff's looking for, he said, but we've got a long time to find that feel. Jeff is only 22 years old. Okay, the race for the lap to put Earnhardt a lap down as we look at Bill Parsons there. Here it is. Here's, there he is, Earnhardt trying to get by Jeff Gordon, oh. brings his contact. Gordon goes up the racetrack, lets Earnhardt have it. Now he's going to have to let Ernie go. Veteran against rookie here as Jeff Gordon, of course, is a rookie in the series and the old veteran and some call him the intimidator Earnhardt. Ernie Irvin got by Gordon also, but Earnhardt remains on the lead lap for the moment. Rusty is got, has passed that group of cars, but Kyle Petty has not been able to. And look right behind Kyle Petty. Let's see if we... Yeah, there's Spencer. Jimmy Spencer has caught Kyle Petty. And he may pass him here. He's trying to... You can see there are 12 cars on the lead lap. All these cars is mid set a lap down. Yeah, there's a bunch of all back. Another, another page, yeah. Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. The Goodies 500. A couple of rookies are running. Well, they were running side by side. Jeff Gordon passes Kenny Wallace. Now, Kenny is on the lead lap, and Jeff is a lap down, so that is the battle for position. And there's Bobby Labonte, the uh, third rookie contender. Kenny Wallace was running a little bit better than this. Right now, his car has went away a little bit. He drifts back. As a matter of fact, he and the 14 car of Terry Labonte made some contact. The couple of laps still coming off turn four, and Kenny did a great job to keep him spinning out. Speaking of rookie points, here they are. Jeff Gordon leads by 51 over Labonte. Kenny Wallace is third, and P.J. Jones also a, has signed up for the rookie program, but runs limited events, and he has only 62 points. So Jeff Gordon appears to be on his way to the Rookie of the Year title for 1993. We can't have a sideways. Did he? Last year we had such a rash of problems with these axles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jeff Gordon, now alongside of Jeff Bodine. He might have uh, got, got a little high. Let's look at it. He comes off of turn two over here the, the last time around. There he is down the inside. There's uh, Kenny Wallace. Bumps Whoa. him just a little bit and gets Gordon very high. And Morgan Shepard goes under him. And here comes Terry Labonte and Jeff Bodine running side by side. Lap 266 is out, and the dreaded Wasp has arrived in Martinsville on the camera lens. The race is back underway. Lap number two, that affected many cars. Oh, whoa, that almost spun out. And he lost a position. Kyle Petty. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've taught him everything I know. I don't know anything about the game anymore. Oh, Kenny Wallace spins coming off the second corner, and the caution flag is out. Caution is out. It's number 10 of the day. Well, this is the break that Rusty Wallace needed. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me correct something. That Pro-Am is at 9 o'clock on ESPN tonight, not 10. Yep, 9 o'clock. Okay. So, the, uh, what is it, what is the thick and plots here? Or is it plot thick? Thick plotness, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever heard that? <laughs> not in the way you put it, no. <laughs> the reason why we are under caution as we watch from Lake Speeds roof cam and yeah. there's a spin yeah Jeff <laughs> Wallace gets bumped in the rear looked like Jeff Gordon might have touched Kenny Wallace coming off the second corner and 
and uh, a close call there for Lake, who just barely got by the spinning car of Wallace. We saw a couple of those rookies together a little bit earlier yes, in the race, did. didn't we? Yes, yeah, we did. Those same two rookies that we saw earlier. It's an axle that is broken in the rear of the Goodrich Chevrolet. The crew turned around and just voiced the axle, and now they jacked the car up. Cecil Gordon is spinning the left rear tire. They are talking to Dale Earnhardt. He throws a cup of ice water out of the window in disgust. That's just trying to hang on.
got a lot of work to do. It looks like some of the branding bent. The whole front end is off of the car right now. They pulled up their parts truck. And Jeff, I tell you what, North Wilkesboro has not been good to you in your rookie season. No, it sure hasn't. It's probably been the, the, the hardest place for us to get around this year. Uh, just having horrible luck here. I mean, I can't believe that this happened on the first lap. You know, and just, I don't know what happened. I was just getting up to speed and they all stopped in front of me. Now we look at all the work your crew's got to do. But uh, it's important for you to get back out there and complete as many laps as you can. Well, as many cars that got, uh, you know, a bad end of this deal, we got to try to get out there. We can, we can pick up a lot of positions in something like this by just getting back out there. But I tell you, my car tore up pretty bad. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be in here for quite some time. The Dakota pit box alongside the Jeff Gordon pit box. You know, North Wilkesboro only has 33 pits, and we started 34 cars, so the four car of Jeff Purvis and Rick Wilson, the 44 car, was sharing a pit. Now, Jeff Gordon has had trouble. He's in the garage here. They have a sign. The four car, his pit. They had to move all their stuff from up in turn four all the way down in turn one. But believe me, they were glad to do it to get a pit of the very only. That's the sure one is coming. Jeff Morton remains behind the wall, as is Morgan Shepard, both involved in that early race incident. So another caution comes out, our fourth of the day, uh, coming up on lap 188. This looks like Burleson get his car started. Doesn't look like it. Meanwhile, that's Morgan Shepard, the central Ford. He was one of the cars involved in that very first lap trade. And by the way, Jeff Morton, who was also involved in this. Let's go to Dr. Dick Berggren. I'm with rookie sensation Jeff Gordon, who has won his first ever career pole for this race at Charlotte. He's got no wins in 1994, but he's got a pair of seconds. One of them right here in the spring. Jeff, your crew chief says this is your racetrack, the one you're best suited for. Is today your day? Well, it can be. Uh, you know, if we make all the right things happen, so far it's been a perfect week for us. And, uh, you know, we've got to have good pit stops. Uh, Got to stay out of trouble, and if we could do all those things, it could be our day, but uh, we're just going to have to wait to see. Working with me on pit road today is Johnny Hayes. John? Neil, as we wait for uh, Randy Travis to sing the national anthem, this gets down to a totally different picture than what we've experienced in probably 15 years on this track. You know, there's, I guess, let's go down for the national anthem right there. Can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the
the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous night For the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. A beautiful version of the national anthem from Randy Travis as we get set for racing in Charlotte, North Carolina. The guy that's on the pole young man jeff gordon just got out of sprint cars dirt cars he's over in this type of racing now he's ran sideways all his life he's young he doesn't know any better he's liable to put on a show today what we need is neil bond in that group let's take a look at the uh, starting grid for today's 34th annual mellow yellow 500 it's presented by Havel. Jeff Gordon is on the pole, 22-year-old freshman, youngest Winston Cup pole sitter in 41 years. And alongside his fifth straight front row start, that's Ernie Urban. For row two, it's Jeff Woodine, the 91 winner of the event, and Ken Schrader, who won it in 89. Row three today is Bill Elliott, the 84 and 87 champion here, and Greg Sachs, his best start of the season. Row four, defending champion here, Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd. In row five, it's a five-time Charlotte winner, Dale Earnhardt and Brett Bodine. For row six, first ride in the Morgan McClure Chevrolet for Joe Nemechek and Rick Mast alongside. In row seven, Harry Gantz there won this race in 82 from the pole, last man to do it. Derek Cope, the former winner of the Daytona 500 in row seven. Row eight, Jimmy Spencer. He had a fourth place here one year back in his first ride for Bobby Allison and Morgan Shepard. Row nine is Todd Bodine, the third brother in that Bodine clan from Chemung, New York, and Rick Wilson taking one of his final rides in the Petty Pontiac. In row 10 today, it's Rich Bickle, short track ace from Wisconsin, and Michael Waltrip. In row 11, Rusty Wallace is there, and alongside the 84 Winston Cup champion, Terry Labonte. For row 12, Hutt Strickland and the six-time Charlotte winner, Darrell Waltrip. Row 13 is Andy Hillenberg, that sprint car star from Indiana, and Ted Musgrave. Row 14 is Dick Trickle and Bobby Hamilton. Row 15 is Jim Sauter and Jeremy Mayfield. Row 16 today is Kyle Petty, who finished third here last year, and Jerry O'Neill. In row 17, Wally Dollenbach and Sterling Marlin. For row 18, it's Mike Wallace and Lake Speed. In row 19, Bobby Hillen and Dale Jarrett with his worst start all year back in 38th spot. Row 20 is Chad Little and John Andretti making his second Winston Cup start. Provisional starters, Bobby Labonte starts 41st on the inside of row 21. And Kenny Wallace rounds out the Haviland starting grid point lead back at the end of August on board with Daryl Waltrip as he gets set to sail in the Western Auto car number 17 this afternoon here's Bobby Hillen taking a look up through the field from car number 90 as he gets set for a go and there's Derek Cope ready for action this afternoon pace car bringing the field down getting set for a start Randy Travis to drop the green over the field today. Mellow Yellow and Coca-Cola talking about a 10-year deal with the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Not talking about it. They signed the deal today. And they're going to be here for some time to come. Here comes the field. Rolling down for a start. Gordon getting a bit of a break. And he's away. In front for just a moment. Ernie Irvin right back. Look at this. Battle continue for second. What a story on Kyle from 31st. He's up to 17th in that uh, car 42 Pontiac. Look at this war. 
On the inside, Gordon, the pole sitter, right alongside Dale Earnhardt. We watched Bill Elliott a while ago. He moved up higher on the racetrack in three and four, and it seemed to be fast for him. A couple of laps ago, Earnhardt moved up the stride. It looks like it looks like Gordon can get under him when he gets high. But the difference is, can you get that momentum off the corner pinching the car in the bottom? So these guys are uh, fishing around trying to find a place on the track to run. And as they run side by side, they squander the opportunity to close on Ernie Irvin. He's checked out. He's out in front by three seconds now. I'm not sure they're squandered. I think he was checking out anyway. That thing <laughs> of his is running. These guys are racing. Still side by side, back straight away, but it's awfully early to be links up in a war like this for the moment Gordon here comes Earnhardt right back on the inside dynamite racing at lap let's see coming up 21 well you just said again the name of the game is racing it's not ride and the racing we do nowadays in Winston Cup you race from the time they drop that green flag to the checker these guys are running just as hard as if we're the end of the race all these rule changes as you watch Earnhardt on the bottom of the racetrack Gordon alongside Gordon goes back into second spot Boy, for an early race battle, we've got a dandy, and it's Jeff Gordon once again taking that high road. Here comes Earnhardt, rolling back on the inside as they come out of turn number four. He settles in behind for a moment. Here's Jeff Gordon running second. Here's Dick Bergman. There's trouble with the 24 car, Ken Squire. In fact, there's double trouble with the 24. One of the problems that they're having, their radio is not working properly. Gordon is unable to talk to his crew, although his crew can talk to him. Now, the crew just asked him a couple of laps ago, when you come by, if it's loose, wave. And we saw a frantic wave through the window. Before the radio went out, Gordon was complaining on nearly every lap. The car is getting looser and looser in the corners. Gordon brings the DuPont Lumina down pit road. Critical stop here. Let's see if he can do any better than what we saw accomplished a moment ago by Ernie Irvin. This is a young team right here. Young driver, the whole team is young. And I tell you, they get the job done. We'll see what they do with this stop. Gordon mentioned when we interviewed him, he said, it's critical our pit stop. Okay, there they go. They're putting some bite in his car, backing off that right rear. That's putting some more bite in the left rear. So he's a tick loose. They're trying to fix some of that. Good stop. 20.2. Right in there. But still, the man dominating the event, or the team dominating the event, is that car number 28. We're still in the midst of pit stops as we get through lap 64 of the 300. 30. Coming down pit road, Jeff Gordon in car number 24. Leaders starting to come in. They're all coming in early. They're not going long runs like they thought they would. Tim beating the rear spoiler up. That guy holding the gas can, taking his right hand and knocking that rear spoiler up, trying to nail the back of that car down a little bit more. Well, he got one out of line to get to that center section. We'll keep it even across through there. If any of those point leaders have trouble here in this race, all of these cars still running, there's going to be a remarkable change in the... Earlier this week, U.S. Air Force Reserve Commander's Performance Award was given by Lieutenant Colonel Ron Hall Hello to again, Jeff Gordon. racing fans. This is Lieutenant Colonel Ron Hall presenting another Air Force Reserve Commander's Performance Award. But before I do, I wish to say that because of budget restraints, I regret that this will be the Air Force Reserve's last presentation. From the depth of my heart, I wish to thank Ken Squire and his staff and all you racing fans out there for what has been a tremendous seven years for me and ten years for the Air Force Reserve. Now for today's events, with me today to receive the Commander's Performance Award is Mr. Jeff Gordon. Jo uh, Jeff, congratulations on your winning the poll for the Mellie Yellow 500. Jeff, this award is very special for the Air Force Reserve because it recognizes individuals who have exceptional leadership and talent while participating in a team sport. Jeff started racing at the age of five. He's come up through the midget circuit into the Grand Nationals. Now he's in the Winston Cup. Jeff, the Air Force Reserve is excited about your future. Please accept this award on behalf of the Air Force Reserve. I'd just like to thank uh, the Air Force uh, for their involvement in racing. Uh, I think it's very exciting. I'm very honored and very proud to receive this award. Thank you. Good recipient, Jeff Gordon, running fourth at the present time, set on the pole at 177 miles an hour, the 22-year-old from Pittsburgh, Indiana.
He's just behind Ernie Irvin, Dale Earnhardt, and Mark Martin. Pretty good company for a kid from Indiana these days. And Hoosier now out of uh, Indiana, originally California lad. Looking further back there, you've got Jeff Gordon in fourth place on Colson, having a very good day. Bobby Labonte's been closing on him in that rookie battle, Neil, but uh, right now it's dramatically the other way. Bobby Labonte's back in 33rd. It's the first Mellow Yellow 500 he's ever ran. Got a quite a run going. He just trails by six seconds to the leader right now. Here comes Jeff Gordon down pit road, just as we're talking about this. The 24 car just turned into the pits. Fourth place. The sun has popped back out. Spencer's coming in behind him also. The sun's out again. It's going to change the complexion of this race. Spencer, seventh place on pit road. Meineke car and the DuPont car both in. Looks like the lemming instinct. They all come in here, follow each other right on to pit road. Once the word was out that Gordon's in, now you've got the 68, Greg Sachs pulling on to pit road. 14 car, the 1, the 44. Rick Wilson's in. You can't afford to stay out there on old tires. One of the drivers we've been watching has been Jeff Gordon in car number 24. Now Gordon picked up his first pole position of his Winston Cup career here this weekend, and he did it with a slightly different motor. Rick Hendrick, the team owner, asked that a B&R engine shop motor be put in the car for qualifying. Normally, the Hendrick team builds their own engines for the Jeff Gordon operation. Well, the B&R motor went in there and took Gordon to the pole. They're racing, though, with a Hendrick Motorsports engine in the car today, racing very well. Jeff posted in fourth position the last time we checked a, a short time ago. Ernie Irvin. It's been a fantastic display by the Robert Yates team. They came out and with Irvin won their first race at Martinsville. They started at Darlington. It's amazing how they seem to have gelled. Sometimes the chemistry works in you. Yeah, that car has always been extremely fast. Ernie fitted right into the car. You must feel the presence of Davey Alice in every moment out there, Ernie. Well, you know, it's in our memory and he's... Uh, we kind of uh, have put him out the thought that he's just our teammate and uh, you know everything we do it's we always refer back to well when we look at the notes it's everything Davey said during a race or during practice and a lot of those things are giving us hints and things to what we need to do so that's why we uh, we really consider him he's still our teammate he's still with us and always will be. Bill Alley at his tent stay with us action more to come from Charlotte let's get more on the story on car 24. Well, Ken, they've got Jeff Gordon's radio fixed now from earlier today, and he has been giving them an absolute earful about the car. He says it's loose, loose, loose. A few laps ago, he radioed to the crew and said, I just about lost it in turn three and four. Rick Hendrick, they've been adjusting this car all day. Can they tighten up enough so you can eat up Ernie Irvin? That's a pretty tall order, eat up Ernie Irvin today, but, you know, when the sun was in, we were pretty close. Now, sun back out, we need to tighten him up. I think we can hold our own with anybody but the 28. The 28 seems to be kind of in a class by himself. There's Harry Gant that gave it such a great run in the early going, but the 33 is backed up. He's in 13th position, two laps back. Gant in the green and white colors. 82 was when it all began for him right here, driving the Hal and Burt Reynolds car that year, set on the pole and won the race. Last man to do so. He set on the pole to win here in this final. Speaking of Hal Needham, I saw him before the race. He's in there filming another Bandit movie. He's in there working before the race started. Take a look at 2 and 24 getting together out here. That's a back and fifth spot. Not a big thing with Ernie Irvin right now. And look at this 24 just shoot down the inside. That's Jeff Gordon for fifth. Kyle Petty falls to sixth. Kyle coming right back, and here comes Jimmy Spencer. Spencer rolling out in the black and yellow car. If you just joined us, that's Spencer in number 12. He's state police kid that came out of an Alabama junkyard and loves racing cars and has helped develop that 28 into the great winning car that it is. So we'll meet Ernie Irvin in a moment. One of the most important jobs in all of racing is the gas man. He must get every drop of fuel in this car every time it stops because a lot of times a pint of fuel makes a difference in whether you win or lose. So also one of the most dangerous jobs you can have. What in the world made you decide to be a gas man? Right, just the pressure, buddy. 
making sure that uh, the car gets full. All the guys can depend on me to fill the car. There are 40 guys out here, and every one of them wants to have a gas man just like this guy. It depends on whether you win or lose what he does. Pit stop. If you can tell us what's wrong with this picture, you could win a trip to the Daytona 500. Look close. One thing about it, Gant wrecks in the corner. He ain't got near as far to go as the rest of them. Before he hits the wall, he gets a bit flirting with that thing all the time. Well, that's why Richard Petty always used to say he ran that real high line at Daytona. Because if something happens, there's ain't far to go. Yeah, but you get there just the same amount of speed. <laughs> right. Welcome back to Rockingham the AC Delco 500. Quick look at the rookies in this race. Jeff Gordon just got lapped. He started 7th. He's now running 29th. Bobby Labonte dropped back 12 spots from where he started. And Kenny Wallace from the tail of the field up to 25th. Nope. Looks easy on television. It's not. Trouble back straight away. A fiery crash. Kenny Wallace against the wall. One car comes bouncing off it. Here come the leaders. They're going to move past it all on the low side. That's T.W. Taylor up against the fence. And they'll come back around to the start-finish line. With Earnhardt in front, and where's Irvin? Another car got involved in it, and it's up against the wall. 72, it looks like, up on the wall. That it is, John Andretti at turn three. A lot of smoke from, I think that's Mike Waltrip's car. And Kenny Wallace continues, even though that car caught fire. We'll take a look at what happened when we come back. Cleanup underway, that's the back straightaway where T.W. Taylor's car is parked. John Andretti's car is against the wall at turn number three. And there were other cars that sustained damage in this, the sixth caution flag of the day. Let's see if we can pick up what happens here, buddy, coming off turn two. Oh, there's a car sideways already. That's Taylor. Looks like he just lost it down there, right up in front of Whoa. everyone. You talk about threading a needle. Kenny Wall said that's the Andretti car. It looks like it hit, excuse me, he tore the right front wheel off. 26 car ran over some debris. And here comes a lot of the lead cars. There's Elliot, the 28. Top of your screen. Yeah, he just lost control coming out of the corner, and he backed it over there. And in that smoke, you really can't see anything. They're just driving where they think he won't be. That Andretti car ripped the entire suspension off. Not only that, it, it tore the brakes off the car. And you see on the left side of your screen, he keeps going. Look at Irvin way up high trying to snake down in there, and he just sneaks in in front of Mark Martin. A lot of the lead cars there. Dodged a bullet on that one. Neil, one thing, when you come in there like that, you hope everybody's slowing down. A lot of times the car behind you will knock you right into it, even though you're making an evasive move. That's when those spotters are worth their pace on top of this building, telling you just shut it down. It's clogged completely up. 26 car that we saw run over some debris coming back into the pits. He'd already been in once. Must have ran over something. Mike Waltrip also got a, just a little piece of Taylor's car on the right front as he went past. There's a 26 car that looks like we saw him run over a big piece of trash or debris. And they're looking to see what kind of damage he has under the car. The car jumped up when he ran over it, so no telling what it is. Let's try to get a word with Mark Martin, buddy. Okay, Mark. This is Buddy Baker at TNN. That thing looks like it's really greasy out there today, is it? Seems like the track's gotten really loose, uh, a lot more loose than most of us expected. A bunch of us are out there, uh, you know, just running sideways. There's a few cars that are really hooked up. So we've got to just keep working on this thing and see if we can get it tight back up. Okay, man. Good luck. They've been under the hood on Ricky Rudd's car, and they are under working underneath the right rear corner of Jeff Gordon's car. He might have run over some of that debris as well in the back straightaway. And the car's running good. You mentioned tires. I saw him take the tires off the car. Oh, we got a problem here. Hello. Got an ambulance on fire back there, Glenn, <laughs> that took either T.W. Taylor or John Andretti on the mandatory trip to the care center. Uh, it's down, back down behind the pits in turn number one. So, A lot of the uh, rescue help here at the track is volunteer. That's the Wallace Rescue Squad. And uh, not Rusty Wallace, as are many of the records. Let's, uh, let's go back down to Glenn now that that's extinguished, Glenn. 
Okay, the problem there seems to be solved. Bobby, I saw him check the tires after they took him off there. That looked to be a perfect set of tires for the chassis on this car. Evidently must be really dialed in right now. Jim Long is one of the over-the-wall guys on Kyle Petty's team as they complete their stop, and we asked him how he got started in Winston Cup racing. Todd Bodai makes a pit stop, and as we watch Darrell Walter, former CRA sprint champ, and sometimes went to Cup driver Brad Knopfinger, was asked about his duties as Walter spotter. Uh, during the week, I work as a fabricator in the shop. At the racetrack, I help Barry and the crew uh, get the car ready for each session and then clock Daryl in the time sessions and uh, let him know if we need to pick up time in the corners or down the straightaways, you know, whether, you know, whether we're running all right against the other guys. And uh, let me correct that this battle is for position. Jeff Gordon and Bobby Labonte, they just changed spots a moment ago and now scoring and showing that those two cars are on the same lap, vying for Rookie of the Race honors. You see that Jeff Gordon leads in the Max Race Card Rookie Point. As they move past Dave Marcus. 